he acknowledges, look, I didn't make I didn't make this up. I'm not the, not just the term Big Apple, but I didn't make up these terms. These are terms that were in popular use in the black community around the country. And I just collected them all in one place and published them, you know. And so he never attempted to claim any credit for it because it was innocuous. He was just he was just like in my case, he was just the messenger. Good morning, this is Epicenter NYC. We connect our communities to news, information, and each other. I'm Andrea Pineda Salgado. The Big Apple is New York City's most popular nickname, but where does it come from? Many credit a sports writer named John J. Fitzgerald for its widespread recognition, and former Mayor Rudy Giuliani cemented this narrative by designating the southwest corner of West 54th Street and Broadway, where Fitzgerald had lived, as the Big Apple Corner. But there's much more to the story. Fitzgerald himself admitted that he only overheard the term being used by black men in the 1920s. Today, Epicenter editorial director Daniel Himes talks to writer and artist Reggie Taylor about his work on covering the history of the Big Apple. Reggie has spent years researching its origins and the crucial role that Harlem played, not just in creating it, but in popularizing it. Now, he wants to get Black New Yorkers the recognition they deserve. If you could kind of just tell me your story, we can take it from there. Yeah, it's quite a story, actually. Sure, I can tell you the story. I was working in Manhattan um, in the mid, early 1990s. I worked for uh, the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding. You know, while I was there, I did this, I worked, I did this campaign in New York City. It was called Golden Opportunity for Unity. And I worked with uh, the president of the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding. His name was uh, Rabbi Mark Schneier. And um, I took this campaign to him. There was an issue at the time. There was a l- big deal. I there was a. Do you remember the issue with Yankel Rosenbaum? No, this was before your time. There was an issue in Brooklyn, and um, I can't remember the exact community. Uh, it was Crown Heights. It was Crown Heights, oh, Brooklyn. Was it like when the child got ran over? Absolutely. That's that was the incident that precipitated the whole thing. And it was really got really ugly. Al Sharpton and his crew got involved, and the Hasidic community in, in Crown Heights got it was just getting escalating out of hand. So I reached out to Rab the Rabbi and I said, "Look, I got a campaign idea. Let's do this. Let's do Golden Opportunity for Unity. It's not a kumbaya thing. It's more practical. Let's just try to get people communicating because nobody's going to pack up and leave Brooklyn or New York or the United States. We got to learn to get along." And it was very successful. Um, and that that started the ball rolling. And in the course of doing this, Danielle, I had developed this design. I developed this logo. So this lo- this emblem, this logo that I designed, is basically an apple. And inside the center of the apple is the phonetic L-U-V, love. But it's configured in such a way that it looks like the profile of a face. Okay. And then, uh, I don't know, a year after Giuliani took office... He is. He wants to do a marketing campaign in New York City, and he's inviting people to send in concepts, you know, to promote the city. He's looking for a logo. He's looking for an emblem. He's looking for an insignia that can be used to market New York City that he would license to private businesses and then collect revenue from it. Okay. And so I submitted. I submitted my idea, and I got a phone call back, and they said, "Hey, you know, we, we like your idea. Blah blah blah." We, we hear, you know, you should you should pursue it, we, you know, and maybe, maybe, maybe not, but you should pursue that. So in the course of doing this, Danielle, I did some research. I said, well, if I'm going to promote the Big Apple, I'd like to know well, where the Big Apple, what is the Big Apple? Why did they call it that? Where did it come from? Mm-hmm. And so I went to the Central Library at 42nd and 5th. All the clues that I found pointed me to the Schomburg. Everything kept pointing to Harlem. So anyway, my research at the Schomburg dug up the true history of the Big Apple, and it, it is this: um, Have you have ever heard of the jazz musician Cab Calloway? I am not sure that I have. So Cab Calloway, in the summer of 1938, Cab Calloway wrote a glossary of of, of slang terms. It was called the Harlem Dictionary. It was called the Dictionary of Harlem Jive. 
and the Hepsis Dictionary of Harlem Jives. And uh, it was a whole glossary of terms, not just the Big Apple. It was a glossary of a whole glossary of all kinds of slang terms that black people use and at the time. question, was this pr uh, published by a publisher or kind of just... Yeah, published by a publisher. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. The dictionary sold over 2 million copies worldwide. And so what happened in the six years of, of, the, of the printings between 30, 1938 and 1944, this book was borrowed and shared who knows how many times. So people were just eating up, eating this up. And so they were exposed to that culture and they were exposed to that nickname. So when the Giuliani administration saw the logo I designed, and I said, look, I got some research. You guys, if you guys are going to adopt my concept, I got some research that'll blow you away. If you're going to introduce the concept, you should introduce the history. And so I got a letter from the deputy mayor's office, and he said, look, we're not going out on a limb and put this information out to the public just because you said so. <laughs> So they sent me a letter and they said, we have forwarded your research to the Manhattan Borough Historian, and her name is Doris Rosenblum, and she is going to review your, your research, and she is going to weigh in, she's going to do her due diligence, she's going to weigh in, and she's going to make a recommendation on whether she thinks your research is legitimate. Okay. Well, Doris Rosenblum sent me a letter, and she said, Reggie, I concur with you. I think your research is the true history of how the world has come to know New York City as the Big Apple. When that information got back to uh, Mayor Giuliani's office, all of a sudden they weren't interested in my concept anymore. And not only did, did they not interested in my concept, they rescinded the RFP. They, 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 did, they didn't want to pursue the idea any longer. And about a year or so after they shut down the RFP and stopped answering my phone calls and letters, Mayor Giuliani even though he had my research in hand and had the recommendation of the Manhattan Borough Historian, Mayor Giuliani named the southwest corner of 53rd Street and Broadway, Big Apple Corner, honoring this man, John Fitzgerald, that said he overheard two black uh, young men using the term in New Orleans. What? It was the most racist thing I'd ever, ever experienced because his office had the research that I sent and they had the recommendation of the Barrow Historian. And I have a copy that I'm gonna send you of the press release that Mayor Giuliani sent out when he named the corner after this gentleman uh, giving him credit for the, for the Big Apple. In the mayor's press release, the mayor said in the press release, oh, this man, John Fitzgerald, he overheard two black guys use the term. So you feel like the mayor, he didn't want to fully give black people or, you know, hard credit? He didn't want to give any credit whatsoever. He had the research. He had the recommendation of the borough historian. And um, it, it's just the most absurd thing. And I've been trying to correct the record. So finally, this past um, summer, last summer, summer of 2022, I, I befriended a young lady who works uh, for a uh, Harlem congresswoman in East Harlem. And, she, and I asked her, I said, you know, what do you think I should do? And she said, no, you need to approach Central Harlem. You need to approach Central Harlem because the Cotton Club and Cab Calloway, his venues were in Central Harlem, not in East Harlem. At the time that Cab Calloway did this, East Harlem was an Italian neighborhood. And so you should go to Central Harlem. So I did. I reached out to Community Board 10 in Harlem. They invited me in. I gave a series of three presentations before then. And the last, when I gave the last presentation in late, late October, they came back and they had a series of three unanimous votes um, adopting my research and, and saying, and gave, they sent me a letter of support, which I will send you. Okay. And they said, hey, this has got to be it, you know, because no other explanation out there makes any sense. And they said, we think we should study it further, but we're convinced that this is how New York City came to be known as the Big Apple. And really a basic question. It was nicknamed the Big Apple, but why? Oh, that's great. That's a great question. I, I actually addressed that and I'll send you, I'll send you, I got, I'm going to send you all the research that I have, all the correspondence I have. But the what I was able to discover is that the term Apple First of all, New York City was the big apple, but New York City wasn't necessarily only apple, okay? My research suggests that 
the whole idea of any city being an apple came out of Christianity, okay? Like the apple in the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, there's a lot of sin going on in the big city. There's drinking, there's partying, there's who knows what, uh -huh. you know? And so we, you know, the country, the country was just coming out of it, you know, just in the industrial age, just the beginning of the industrial age. And a lot of agrarian people, a lot of rural people were suspicious of big cities. And so big cities were associated with being dens of iniquity, places where a lot of sin was happening. And so they were referred to as the, as the apple. And so New York, of course, because New York is New York, New York was the big apple. And my research suggests that that's how that whole idea came about. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, I, I went to the Schaumburg. I took a number of trips to the Schaumburg Center and did some serious digging to, fi to find out that very question you just asked. Like, why not the big banana? You know what I mean? Like, why the big apple? Right. And I mean, I never really thought about it before. I just kind of accepted the term. Yeah. Well, when I started digging... When I started digging and I started finding this out, I, I dug a little deeper to find out why the apple? What, what is the association of an apple? You know, and that's my best interpretation from the research. I mean, nothing actually came out and said that, but there were some references in some of my research that strongly suggested that that was the association. The association with the apple being, you know, that rural, you know, agrarian or rural people didn't trust big cities. They, they were uncomfortable in big cities. They felt um, they were unsafe. There was a lot of unsavory activity going on, and they associated with the biblical reference of the apple of the Garden of Eden being sinful. And what is your ultimate goal here? What, what kind of acknowledgement recognition do you want from the city? I personally don't really want much recognition. It's not about me. It's really about correcting the history. It's very unfair what Giuliani did. I mean, they, re they, they reached out to me and said, we're going to do our due diligence and we're going to have your uh, research reviewed before we publicly acknowledge it as the history mm -hmm. of the Big Apple. And then he would go out and give the honor to somebody who said he overheard somebody else say it. Yeah. Yeah, ideally, would you like to have some sort of sign or recognition move to Central Harlem? Absolutely. That is what I propose. That is what I propose. Not only that, I'm also a sculptor. I designed a sculpture to commemorate Cab Calloway and commemorate Harlem. I'll send you that as well. The, the board, the community board 10 actually voted on that as well. And they, they wanted to do some additional you know, study on it. They like the idea, but it's not to a point where I'm ready to erect it. It's just a concept. Okay. But you know, it's just the unfairness of it all. That should not be allowed to stand as the true history of why the world knows New York City as a big apple. And, and the man who sold 2 million copies worldwide defining New York as the big apple in print and whose book was made the official slang book of the city of New York, he gets, he's not even mentioned. There's not even no mention of this man. Um, Mr. Calloway was the, um, as I said, the um, master of ceremonies at the Cotton Club and just a world-renowned artist. He's just a phenomenal guy. For this plaque that, you know, you were envisioning in Central Harlem, what does it say? It would just acknowledge that this man who, and, 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 and mind you, in the, in the last edition, in the 1944 edition of, in the final edition of his dictionary, he acknowledges, look, I didn't make I didn't make this up. I'm not the, not just the term Big Apple, but I didn't make up these terms. These are terms that were in popular use in the black community around the country. And I just collected them all in one place and published them, you know. And so he never attempted to claim any credit for it because it was innocuous. I mean, he he right. he never made the connection. He was just he was just like in my case, he was just the messenger. So he didn't try to claim any, you know, any unique status as a result of what he did. He just put all the terms together and published them in a book, not realizing the impact that that, that particular term would have because it was cool. And, you know, I mean, it, it just needs to be acknowledged, Danielle. That's really what it comes down to.
The impact of the Big Apple isn't just cultural, it's financial. In fact, the Big Apple destination marketing campaign has brought in billions if not trillions of dollars in economic activity to New York City, all without attribution to the term's origin. And as Reggie has found, very little of that economic activity made its way north of 110th Street. But he has had enough of the status quo. After three unanimous votes, Community Board 10 in Harlem has extended Taylor an official letter of support. Taylor has also reached out to Mayor Eric Adams' office. The goal, official recognition of Cab Calloway and the real origin of the Big Apple in central Harlem. Because that's where it all happened. For new ways to get involved in your community, visit us at epicenter-nyc.com. That's all for today. Thanks for listening. And thanks for supporting us as we do our best to support our community. We couldn't do it without you. And if you're not already a member, sign up today by using the link in our show notes. Our intro music is All the Pretty Horses by Caravica. You can find more of their music on their website linked to in our podcast description. <laughs>